Hi, my name is Michelle Ferguson, and I'm the crochet pattern designer of Two Brothers Blankets. Today, I'm going to get you started on my quiet morning pullover. This is a simple but stunning pullover for the fall. It comes to the sleeve comes to about the elbow. Um, very simple, but just very nice looking crocheted sweater. It uses DK weight yarn. Um, and is worked from the top down in a circular yoke all the way in the round, no sewing required. Um, for this project, like I said, you're going to need a DK weight yarn. For this pink one here, I used We Crochet's Gloss DK weight yarn in the colorway Proper Pink. It is a 70% merino wool, 30% silk blend. For the tutorial, I'm going to be using Mary Maxim Mellow Spun DK. This is a 100% acrylic yarn. It's a very nice, soft acrylic. Um, I just don't have enough of the gloss to use to make another one, so we're going to use this Mary Maxim DK. Both yarns are really great options for this project. And then you're also going to need a crochet hook. I'm using an H 5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a Furls Streamline hook. You'll need to check your gauge to determine what hook size you need to use. And then you'll need a measuring tape, scissors, uh, maybe a stitch marker if you'd like, and a yarn needle for weaving in ends, as well as the written pattern, which you can find on my blog, or you can purchase the PDF on Ravelry and Etsy. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we are going to be working this sweater from the top down. So we're going to be starting with this ribbing trim we have here at the top. So that is what I'm calling the neck ribbing. And so we're going to be starting here and working our way down. We'll do the ribbing in rows and then we'll join it. And then we'll start working in rows along the side of the ribbing. So I just wanted to show you that so you have that visual there to start our neck ribbing we're going to make a slip knot and we are going to chain five one two three four five like so and then we're going to do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and across so i like to work into the back bump of my chains so i'm going to do one single crochet in that second chain from my hook and then one single crochet in each chain across. So I should have four single crochets. Like so. And then for row two, we're going to chain one. This does not count as our stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet in the back loop only each stitch across till we get to the last one. So one, two, three in the back loop only. And then I always do my last one in both loops. And four. And then we are going to repeat row two for 80 rows. So chain one, turn my work, one back loop only in the first three. Whoops. And one single crochet in both loops. And we're going to just keep going, chain one turn, do it again until we have 80 rows of this ribbing trim. And then from there, we are going to join and start working our yoke. So I'm going to go ahead and work these 80 rows. And you can do the same. And then I'll come back on camera and show you how to join and get started with the, the yoke of the sweater. All right, I've completed my 80 rows of my ribbing. And now I'm going to join them. I'm just going to kind of fold it in half and slip stitch my ends together. Um, so just put it through both your hook through both loops or both ends and slip stitch Oops. to join that.
All right. And so now we have joined our ends. And I'm going to turn it to where the seam is on the inside. And it, now we're ready to start the yoke. We're not going to fasten off. We're just going to continue on from here. Uh, we're going to chain one and we're working along the sides of the ribbing. So we're just working into that. And it says that we are going to do a herringbone half double crochet in each row end, which is the side of the row, around and slip stitch in the first to join. So I'm going to do one. Two, three, and I'm just working along each the side of each row, like so. Five, and so at the end, since we did 80 rows, we should have 80 herringbone half double crochets. And I don't think I said this at the beginning, but this is the same for all sizes. This part, um, at the throughout the yoke, it will change per size. So whatever size you're making, this is how you'll start. I'm going to be making the extra small size for the tutorial. Um, so you'll need to follow the pattern for if you're doing a different size, your stitch counts and such and row counts and such like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do all 80 herringbone half doubles. And I'll meet you at the end of this round. All right, here is my first round of the yoke. Uh, and now we're ready to start our second round. So I'm going to chain one and turn my work. And we're going to start our increasing now. So for round two, we're going to do one herringbone half double in the first seven stitches and then two in the next stitch and we're going to repeat that around seven and then two in the next so I'm going to do one two three four five six seven and then two one into the next stitch, that eighth stitch. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around. Seven, one in each of the next seven. And then two in the next. And that's going to increase our stitch count by 10 stitches. So we'll have 90 at the end of this round. Five. And seven. So I'm going to go ahead and continue doing my increases for this round. And I'll meet you back when I'm finished. All right, I've completed the first round of increases. And now for the rest of it, I believe it goes to size 12 where they're, all the sizes are the same. Um, you're just going to continue increasing by 10. So round three, I'm going to do eight stitches and then two in the next and repeat that around. And so just follow along with the pattern to determine how much you need to increase and to what point. For size extra small, I'm going to round 12. So I'm gonna do that off camera and I'm gonna continue increasing my yoke. And then I'm gonna show you from there what we'll do next. All right, I have completed the yoke part, uh, the increases part of my yoke four size extra small, and then it says to move to complete yoke. So that's a section in the pattern that it's underlined. It says complete yoke. So for size extra small, it says to chain one and turn and to do a herringbone half double crochet in the first 94 stitches. And then I'm going to do two herringbone double crochet in the next. So I'm going to, and then repeat it. So I'm going to do that now. Mm 
All right, I have completed round 13 for my yoke. And now for the rest of my yoke, so I've done increasing completely now. So I have 192 stitches. And for the rest of my yoke, I am just going to be working one stitch in each stitch around. So for size extra small, it's rounds 14 through 24. And it just says to uh, chain one, turn my work, herringbone half double around. So I'm just doing one herringbone half double in each stitch around, joining to my first stitch and then working another round. And so I'm gonna do that for rounds 14 through 24 and then we'll get to where we will split for the armholes and work the rest of our sweater. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm doing rounds 14 through 24. Check the pattern for how many rounds you need to do for the size you're making. And it's just real simple, one stitch in each stitch around. Um, and then we'll be ready to split for the armholes. So I'll do that now and meet you at the end. All right, I've completed my rounds for the yoke that was just one in each one stitch in each stitch i've done through i believe it's round 24. let me double check that yes for extra small size so now we're going to separate the body and the sleeve so we're going to this is where we create our armholes. So this is what I have so far. And so for that first round of the separate body and sleeve section, it says to herringbone half double crochet in the first 28 for this size. So I've counted 28 stitches and stuck a stitch marker in that 28th stitch. And then it says to skip 40. So I have counted 40. And then I stuck a stitch marker in the next stitch. So there's 40 stitches in between the two stitch markers. Then it says to herringbone half double in the next 56. So I counted 56 and I put a stitch marker in that 56th stitch. And then skip 40 again. So I did 40, I counted 40 here and then put my last stitch marker in the next stitch. And then you're gonna do a herringbone double crochet in each of the next 28. So I have my stitch markers where I need to work my herringbone half double crochets. So there's 40 stitches on this side and 40 stitches on this side that will not be worked. And that's gonna create the armholes. So let me chain my work, uh, chain and turn my work. Zoom in a little for you to see. Okay, we're good. All right, so I'm going to do my herringbone half double crochets until I get to my stitch marker. And the stitch markers are totally optional. It's just a little easier than trying to count while you're crocheting. So I'm going to go on until I get to my stitch marker. All right, I'm at my stitch marker. That is my 28th stitch. So I am going to work a herringbone half double crochet into that stitch. But then from there, we're skipping the ones in between. So all I'm gonna do is come over here and get my next stitch marker. And I am going to work a herringbone double crochet into it. Like so. And I've created, let me do that a little tighter, the armholes by doing that. Whoops, there we go. All right, so here we go. We've got our armhole now. And now I'm going to continue working one herringbone half double crochet in each stitch across until I get to my next 
stitch marker. And then I'll create the second armhole the very same way. Okay, I'm back to my next, um, I'm over at my next stitch marker. I'm gonna do one herringbone half double into the stitch with the stitch marker. And then I am going to skip over all these other stitches in between and do a herringbone half double in the next marked stitch. So we're over here to our next one and get situated. And then I do one herringbone half double in that one. Whoops. All right, got my armhole. And then I'm going to do one half double, herringbone half double in each stitch until I get to the end of my round. All right, that is our joining or our separating round. Um, so I've got my armhole on this side and I've got my armhole on this side and then the rest is the body. So that's gonna be the bottom. If you prefer, you can take these stitch markers out or leave them in, totally up to you. Um, but you won't need them for the sleeve anymore now that you have. That done. So now we're ready to move on to the body of our sweater. Okay, for the body of the sweater, it says for rows one through 35 for this size rounds, not rows. You're going to just chain one, turn your work, and do one herringbone double crochet in each stitch around. So I'm going to put a stitch marker at, on the first stitch of this one, this row, just so I know that that is the first row of my body. Sometimes it can be a little hard to see. So you can just do one stitch in each stitch around. And so now at this point, you're just adding length to the body and you're just going to work into these stitches. You're not going to be doing anything with the armholes right now. You're just working into the stitches around. I'll show you how I do once we get to the arm hole area, just so that you can see it. And then I'll let you get to it. So this is the stitch that I did to join. I'm working one herringbone and then all the way around. So see, I haven't worked into any of the armhole stitches. I'm just working around. So I'm going to do that and you're going to repeat that all the way around for 35 rows for this size. It will vary depending on what size you're making. So check the pattern for how many rows you need to do. And then also make sure you try it on or try it on the person you're making if possible to check the length. Because after that, you're just going to be doing the, the ribbing hem, the hem ribbing, the trim at the bottom. And that only adds about an inch. I think it's an inch or an inch and a quarter. Okay, let's start with our sleeve. So for the quiet morning pullover, you could stop here and add your ribbing and it'd be more of like a cap, like truly short sleeve. But the pattern is written for, um, for it to go to about your elbow. So right above your elbow. So we need to add some rounds um, of the herringbone half double before we add our trim. Totally up to you if you prefer, however you want it. You can start just adding your trim here or you can add more length as is written in the pattern. So it says in the pattern to, with right side facing, so this is our right side, join yarn in armhole at bottom center of underarm. So I am going to open up my armhole here and I'm just going to join it at the bottom here. Join my yarn. And then for this size, it says chain one, work 44 herringbone half double crochets evenly around arm, armhole, slip stitch in first to join. So I am going to 
chain one and work my first herringbone half double and then two, three, and I'm going to work all the way around, mostly in the stitches, um, but you may have to do a few right here in this little gap where there are no stitches to get 44 um, stitches evenly around. So I'm going to do that now and I'll meet you at the end where we'll join. All right, I've worked 44 stitches all the way around my armhole and have joined to that first one I did with a slip stitch. So now it says rounds two through 15, chain one, turn, and herringbone half double around and slip stitch to your first. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to work um, 44 herringbone half doubles in each stitch around and join for rounds two through 15 um, for this part. So, and then we will decrease a little and start our trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and work these rounds two through 15, and then I'll come back and show you how to finish it up. I've worked 15 rounds of my sleeve and now I'm ready to finish it. And so for round 16, we're gonna do a little bit of decreasing. So it says to chain one, turn our work. Let me get situated here. All right. Now it says to do a herringbone half double in the first nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then to do a herringbone half double crochet two together. So that's a decrease. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, grab that loop and pull through one. And then I'm going to yarn over, insert hook into my next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop and grab that loop and pull through another one. And now I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. So I have decreased here and then we're going to repeat around. So I'm going to do another nine. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, and then another decrease. So half double crochet, herringbone half double, two together. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around and then join to my first. All right, I've completed round 16. And I have 40 stitches. So now I am going to do round 17. I'm going to chain one, turn my work. And I'm going to do one herringbone, half double in the first eight. Three. Five, six, seven, and eight, and then a herringbone half double two together. So my decrease. Okay, and I'm going to repeat that around again. So this time it's eight stitches, and then your decrease for size extra small. All right, I've completed round 17 and we've got one more round 
before we get to the ribbing. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and this time we're doing one herringbone half double in the first seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then a herringbone half double two together. So our decrease. And we're going to repeat that around and we'll have 32 stitches to end out the sleep. All right, I've completed round 18 and now we're ready to start our ribbing, which is going to be the cup of the sleeve. Um, it's just a little ribbing trim. What we're going to do is we're going to chain five. All right, so now we are going to do one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So we're going to have four single crochet. One. Two, three, four. All right. And then we are going to slip stitch in the next two stitches of the sleeve. So I'm going to just slip stitch to my sleeve right there. One, whoops. One and two. All right, that's step one. Now I'm going to chain one, turn it here, and I am going to do one single crochet in the back loop only of the first three, and then in both loops of the last, like so. And then for row three, I'm going to chain one, turn again, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do one single crochet in the back loop only, this time of each stitch across. And then this fourth one, back loop only as well. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches of my sleeve. So it's a join as you go type method where I'm joining it to the sleeve as I'm working. So then row four, I'm going to repeat row two. I'm going to chain one and turn, do one single crochet in each of the first three stitches in the back loop only, and then a single crochet in both loops of the last. And so now I'm going to repeat rows three and four around the entire sleeve. So I chain one, do one single crochet in each, in the back loop only of each stitch across, and then slip stitch into the next two. That's a repeat of row three, and then I'm going to chain one and turn and do one single crochet in the back loop only of the first three, and then one single crochet in both loops of the fourth. And that's a repeat of row four. And I'm gonna continue to do that all the way around the sleeve, and then we'll join at the end to make our little ribbing cuff. And that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the around the whole sleeve, and then I'll come back and show you how to join it and fasten off. All right, I have completed all of my ribbing around the armhole and I'm ready to join my ends together. So I'm just going to take this and chain one. I'm going to stick my hook through all of the loops from both sides and then slip stitch to join them. And that is all I'm going to do. So there's four slip stitches here. All right, and then I will fasten off. I don't have my scissors with me, but I'll fasten off there 
and then I've got a nice ribbing trim. You're going to do the exact same thing for the ribbing trim at the bottom of your sweater. Um, just exactly the same as that. So just follow the instructions on your pattern and then you'll fasten off and you'll weave in all your ends. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.